It is an incredible show, and again, it's back for its sixth and final season. I'm already bummed that it's going to end, but that means, who the heck knows? I didn't. I never saw this show coming to begin with after Breaking Bad. Again, the final season is going to be split into two parts. We're seeing the first part of that final season. Better Call Saul, available Mondays at 9 Eastern time, back here on our terrestrial radio outfit with Patrick Fabian, who plays Howard Hamlin in the great, brilliant show Better Call Saul here on the show. Okay, so you guys are all shot out, right? It's all done? You it know. is all done. It is just going to be laid out for you at this point. So, uh, you know, just like you, Monday night, you know, I sat down to, to watch it again. Like right. I have since the beginning, because yes. I've said this before, you know, I'm I'm in a nice show uh, about lawyers who have emotional problems. And then I watch the show and I'm like, <laughs> what are we doing in the desert? What's all this gunplay going on? So it's a revelation for me too. You know, especially this season, because yes. we're so much of a family on the show we would go and watch each other's scenes when we weren't in them, you know? So I spent a lot of time watching other stuff, supporting one another. But mm -hmm. because we were shooting during COVID restrictions, things got really tight and narrow. So this season especially, you know, I would read the scripts and know what was going on, right. but I only would be a part of what Howard was doing in this final season. And so Monday night was a reminder of, you know, I'd read it about a year ago and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, Oh, that's going. Oh, that happened. Right, and it was all sense memory for me. So it's, it's unfolding brand new for me as well. And then you also get to see how it is all shot as well, and it's just so beautiful. The whole thing is yeah. just remarkable how this show plays on the screen. Well, you know? Marshall Adams is our DP and uh, uh, director of photography, and we yes. got to go ahead and see um, the premiere in a movie theater at the American Legion here in Hollywood. And it was a reminder that these guys are painting pictures for the big screen. It's so lusciously, uh, you know, lit mm -hmm. and shot. You know, right. Ray Seahorn said to me uh, early in, uh, I think it was season two. Man, that was the first season. And she came up to me at one point. She'd done, she'd done a, a day of work and she came to me and she goes, look, I'm not accusing you of Patrick of being the kind of actor who's waiting for his close-up to turn it on. I would never accuse you of that. <laughs> <laughs> she said, however, if you are, yes. she goes, uh, I just did a whole days of work yesterday. She goes, and I'm pretty sure they're using the wide. And sure enough, um, I've been in a number of scenes in this where the final product is a shot and we're two silhouettes and you hear the dialogue and they never punch in on my face. Not that I'm counting. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick Fabian here on the Rich Eisen Show. And the actors that you have been uh, with on screen um, are throughout this entire series. You know, and, and again, this is, this is um, very serious stuff. But, I mean, there is a certain comedic element. Sometimes you can laugh at some of these scenes as well. And the, the character Saul Goodman, certainly from Breaking Bad, is, is that. You've got Bob Odenkirk, Michael McKeon. Okay, who was in the first several years of this show. The mighty Michael McKean, I like to call. You know, I mean, anytime I read a scene and I saw that Michael and I were in a scene together, I thought, right. oh, we're okay, because Michael's in it. I mean, and it, it, the, the, did you ever pull him aside and ever pick his brain about, like, Spinal Tap or anything like that or back in the day? You know, anything both him that? and Bob aren't, aren't jukeboxes. Like, hey, yeah. tell me a story about this. Right. So I learned to sort of, like, rope him in sideways to get him talking about something. <laughs> yes. They're avid readers. And so when they weren't working, um, they would sit there and uh, they would read hardback books. They were voracious readers about all sorts of things. Okay. And they would, they would trade the books back and forth to one another. Uh, I'm not saying that Ray and Mando and I didn't sit there and read as well. We read tweets and You're we took good. selfies. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's not like I'm totally throwing them under the bus. You're very well read, man, and 280 characters at a time. I understand. Yeah, absolutely. That, I follow you on Twitter, so. But sometimes we would be like, hey, does... What about that? Da, da, da. And all of a sudden, McKean especially would be like, he'd overhear like a snippet of a conversation. He'd go, oh, that's interesting. When I was working with the credibility gap in the 1970s, and then we would just put down our stuff because he would go on a story and roll with stuff. So that's <sighs> how we would get gems out of him and Bob. I mean, just the stories that he, he came on this show last year or something like that. Something like that. And yeah. I just kept on peppering him one after oh, yeah. another because of the stuff that he's done. And now I just saw, uh, I, I just reminded again, episode one of this season, you're with Ed Begley Jr., which is another. Another one. I think he was, if I'm not mistaken, Ed Begley Jr., speaking of Spinal Tap, was the one of the drummers that exploded in Spinal Tap. Was he? Yes, he was. 
If you said any he, phrase, I think Ed Bailey was fill in the blank. And There's like a good 50 50 chance. Yes, he, true. in the black and white photo uh, videos of the early days of Spinal Tap, oh, and the drummers began right. to explode. He was the first one who exploded, Ed Bailey Jr. Oh, my God. Yeah. But he's I'm great to work with, too. With Ed is just, you know, an open right. heart. He's been around, he's, he, he knows what's what. And, um, right. And also working with Ed, kind of like with working with Michael, I'd be in the scene and, uh, you know, of course I'm in the scene. I'm a professional. I would not be thinking about anything other than what my character is thinking. Nice. But on yes. occasion, yes. I would sit there and I'd get outside of myself going like, that's Michael McKean I'm working with. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, that's Ed. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes with Ed, I would also be like, is Ed listening to me? Because <laughs> Ed has that wonderful quality about him where yes. he's completely present, but it almost looks like I feel like my words are like going over his skull. Yes. And he's just like, I don't even know what you're saying. He's just gonna say what he wants. Well, I, I love this show and it's always so difficult to interview anybody who's involved with this show or with Breaking Bad prior to it is because you can't tell me a damn thing <laughs> about what's coming up. Nor no. would I kind of want to know it yeah, either, I don't know either, you know, but I still do want to know because the aspect about this show that's fascinating and certainly your character is one of them is that your character uh, created for this series, mm -hmm. not from the Breaking Bad world. But I'm wondering how you do get connected to that world and why you're not in it. And that's that's part of and the same thing with Rhea Seahorn's character as sure. well, to see how your characters wind up and then what happens to you. You're one of the few characters where I'm kind of on the edge of my seat wondering if you make it. Well, or I not, mean, part of that's know? the setup from the end of season five, which in case you haven't watched, is on Netflix. Attaboy. A one through five are available on Netflix. Okay. Um, you know, they sort of set it up that Kim and Jimmy have their sights set on Howard, wanting to take him down. You. So, so I think mm -hmm. there's a there's concern there, uh, and the fact that we don't exist in Breaking Bad. But as it's been pointed out, we never saw Saul Goodman go home during Breaking Bad. He was always at the office. So there's that idea of like him and Kim can be together. Does he go home to Kim? Also in life. That's People true. don't always have to have something dramatic to all of a sudden no longer be friends or be involved with one another. As of this point, Howard's washed his hands of Kim and Jimmy. You right. know what I mean? So by all we know, you know, for all we know, in Breaking Bad, Howard's just still, you know, putting around, doing his, uh, doing his law, doing his thing. There's no reason to have him in Breaking Bad. So I don't know. I can tell you this though: uh, Vince and Gilligan aren't the kind of uh, Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould right. aren't the uh, the head writers who just write to show something for Splash. Everything that they have happened to all the characters happens because the story dictates it. So you're in good hands with that. If you've liked what you've seen so far, right. I guarantee you're going to be very interested in seeing what happens with all of season six. Is it possible that your character's managing the Cinnabon where Saul Goodman has to go hide out in, in the next? <laughs> I in the would month? love it. Would that be great? <laughs> pull back. <laughs> would that be great? What a twist. <laughs> where, He's where, the regional manager. He's right. just coming in to check on That's right. what's going on. Are we using enough icing? Up. Like you're telling him to sweep <laughs> up. <laughs> This is not standard. That would be great. Oh my gosh. I'm more concerned about Howard. It's a golf game. Like what's his handicap? Well, uh, it's gotta be great. It, well, it is great. Cause he's got a lot. That's where he does his business. I mean, let's face it, you know, uh, you know, uh, not Jimmy, uh, Chuck McGill was doing the, the heavy lifting at right. HHM. Right. So Howard's definitely on the course. I'd say he's a nine. But he says That's he's good. a 12. That's right. So he can look good. Of course, gonna Howard's got to, he's, he's gaming, you know, he's bad. scheming. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.